Hello everybody. My next camera is the Minolta X7A. It's from 1985. Uh, it's a Minolta SR or MD or MC. This one has the MD. Uh, it has both couplings uh, mounting to the body, but physically it'll take any of those three. This is the black bodied international version of the X370. It was made in Japan. Uh, Minolta didn't move the X370 manufacturing to China until 1990. Its aperture priority or metered manual is through to lens metering, center weighted. It has a uh, quartz timed horizontally traveling cloth shutter. In aperture priority it's stepless and you get from four seconds to a thousandth of a second. When you're manually setting it, uh, and it shows through this window, it's auto right now, and then you select your different shutter speeds through here. Manual, it's um, one to one thousandth of a second plus bulb. In the viewfinder, it shows you an M or A, and it shows you the selected shutter speed in auto or in manual. And when you're working in metered manual, um, the solid LED is what it's metering, and then if they, you're not already matched up, uh, the one that blinks is what uh, you have set for your shutter speed. If you're over or under the metering range, uh, it blinks, and then, is that right? Yeah, I think so. Uh, and then if it's going to be slow, um, there's a one to four second uh, LED at the very bottom, and that one will show solid. There's an auto exposure lock this gizmo on the front, you put it down and you do have to hold it. It doesn't lock it. I mean, it locks the auto exposure, but the button itself doesn't lock. And then if you move it up, it's a 10 second self timer. You defeat that just by pushing it back down. ISO is this dial here. It goes from 12 to 3200 in third stop steps. Only the full stops are labeled. It just has dots for the in-between. But the manual is pretty easy to find for this guy. Metering and use of this guy, it does take two 1.5 volt batteries, LR44, SR44. Um, so they're common, but you do have to have it. There aren't any speeds that work manually. Flash sync is at a 60th of a second, and 60 blinks in the viewfinder and it does have, it's not super intelligent, but it does have an extra contact on the hot shoe. Using a Minolta X or PX flash, it will automatically set it to a 60th of a second for you. Um, otherwise, if you're using some other kind of a flash, you have to manually set it to a 60th of a second, and that number is in red. A couple of accessories for this that I didn't get with it. Um, it'll take an auto winder G or a motor drive one for continuous shooting. The lens on it, a little hard to tell, I've got a polarizing filter on here, is an MD50 F1.7. It's a pretty sweet lens. A little dusty, I had it in the mountains with me. It's six elements in five groups. Um, this one, the rubber on the focus ring came off. Not sure what happened, but it's kind of too big. I don't know if it got hot or something. So anyway, I'm going to try and figure out how to get that back on there. Uses 49 millimeter filters, so pretty common filter size. And close focusing on this is, is one and a half feet, a little under half a meter. I used a uh, 200X flash, which came out, it works perfectly with this body. It's got the single extra contact. It's guide number 20 meters. So it's a decent little flash and it, uh, it has the sensor on the front so it'll quench itself when it's gotten enough light. This was from a different kit. It takes four AA batteries. I got a pretty cool kit. I got this 132PX which is actually a slightly more sophisticated flash but this one has something wrong with it. And in this kit, I also got, let me find them here, 
this Star Blitz 80 to 200 f 4.5 macro. It's a decent lens, but it's a little hard to focus sometimes. Does that thing where the uh, split image in the finder, part of it will be black, and you have to get it just right to where you can see both halves and use the split image. So focusing for this, it's better to use the micro prism or the matte field. But decent little lens. It may have been made by Tokina. It's a push-pull and then you move it all the way over to your macro settings. It goes all the way to 1 to 4, so it's not true macro, but decent close-up lens. Kind of random. I got a nice lens. It's a Rokinon uh, zoom lens, 28 to 80, f3.5 to 4.5, but this is actually a Pentax mount. So no idea why that was in the kit. Somebody cleaning out a closet or something just threw all their stuff in there. So next time I'm doing a K-mount uh, camera, I'll have to try that bad boy. The old manual focus uh, Minolta lenses, there are a ton of them out there. Most of them are super sharp and you, they can be had for a song. Uh, people are kind of gobbling them up to use, gobbling them up to use on mirrorless cameras, but there's still a really good value for the money. My first roll in this uh, was a uh, not expired uh, Kodak, I'm blanking on it, Color Plus, the 200 uh, color print film. My chemicals were worn out, not from use, uh, was, I'm using the Cinestill kit, and I've been religiously adding time to the uh, first developer uh, according to their instructions but just shelf life. Sometimes I don't shoot enough chemicals go bad so my color images they kinda suck. My second roll um, my wife found this for me in a thrift store and in the same place she found a big stash of Kodak Plus X. It's ISO 25 but it's from I think it was 1998 so I actually was smart for a change and did the add a step per decade. Um, so I really only got uh, 12 shots um, off a 36 exposure roll because I shot my first image at box speed, 125, and then 64, and then 32. Because sometimes if it's been frozen before it hit the thrift store, it'll be closer to box speed. But this stuff... 32 uh, ISO was the sweet spot. So I've got a few more uh, rolls of that, thankfully, and they're in the fridge now. So I'm on to the next camera. I'll be shooting some more of that Plus X, and I won't have to bracket, because now I know to shoot it at ISO 32. So I will see you then.